Good evening, I'm Ryan Bass, in for Mike Mickle. Welcome to INN News. The clock is ticking on whether the federal government will allow a Canadian company to build an oil pipeline through the Plains states. Protesters were out in Topeka, Kansas over the proposed pipeline, which would carry oil nearly 2,000 miles from Canada to refineries along the Gulf of Mexico. Environmentalists are concerned an oil spill along the line would put life, wildlife, public water supplies, and communities all at risk. That includes communities in Nebraska. Jonathan Athens from our affiliate KPTM in Omaha has more on the debate there. The fate of a proposed oil pipeline extending from Canada through Nebraska is in President Obama's hands. But until he makes a decision, the fight over Keystone's plans rages on in Omaha. I'm honestly not sure how you can look at yourself in the mirror every day and continue lying to folks like you are. Or let's even just give you the benefit of the doubt and say misleading folks like you are. Jane can make all these assertions, but where's her evidence? Where, where's her facts? A labor union has joined forces with Keystone to rally support for the pipeline. Because it's going to create jobs, um, uh, unlock jobs that we desperately need right now with the high unemployment rate. But environmentalists say the pipeline is a threat to the aquifer. They're concerned about spills like the one that just happened this summer in Montana. It's completely covered in what appears to be crude oil. So what's driving the debate right now? And I think the politics are going to decide this, not the economics. Uh, the economics are, are being pushed to the side. And the big question remains, is the economic benefit worth the risk to the environment? Jonathan Athens reporting for INN News. The good news out of Capitol Hill last night. The Senate voted to pass the spending measure, meaning a possible federal government shutdown has now been avoided. The chamber overwhelmingly approved two short-term spending bills to fund FEMA for the beginning of the new fiscal year, which starts this Saturday. The measures now go to the House, which must approve them. Democrats and Republicans were at a standstill over a GOP demand to cut spending elsewhere to offset disaster relief funding in the current fiscal year. And aid, well, it can't come fast enough for the victims of Tropical Storm Irene. These people waited for hours in Hartford, Connecticut to apply yesterday. We lost power. We had to stay at a hotel for two days, and um, we had to throw a lot of perishables in the refrigerator. Applicants had to bring proof of their income and storm-related expenses. And now we turn to your vote 2012, which Republican is not running for president. And today it became official. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie is not entering the pack of Republicans vying for the White House. There had been speculation earlier in the week that he was giving it some consideration. Now, many lead Republicans were hoping he would join the race, but that's not going to happen. Meanwhile, despite losing the Florida and Maine straw polls, a new CNN poll shows Texas Governor Rick Perry is keeping his lead in the race. 28% of those polled say they'd pick Rick Perry as the Republican nominee. 21% say they would support former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney. And 10% would back Newt Gingrich. But in a hypothetical matchup against President Obama, the poll shows a different leader. It indicates Romney would fare better than any other GOP contender in the general election, including Perry. Time for global news now. 32 people were killed and more than 70 others injured in Pakistan when a bus returning from a school study trip and picnic overturned. Most of those killed were students ranging in age from 10 to 15. The crash is still under investigation. Greek Prime Minister George Papandreou is in Berlin today, meeting with German Chancellor Angela Merkel and business leaders. His visit comes ahead of a key vote in the German parliament on Thursday. That's when they'll decide on possible changes to the European Financial Stability Facility, a fund created to combat Europe's debt crisis. What do 2,000-year-old parchment manuscripts and high-tech giant Google have in common? Well, starting this week, Internet users can, for the first time, use Google search and scanning technology to examine five manuscripts from what many historians believe is one of the most important archaeological finds ever made, the Dead Sea Scrolls. The ancient texts were first discovered in 1947 in a cave near the Dead Sea. The scrolls reveal details about the development of Judaism and shed light on the relationship between early Christian and Jewish religious traditions. And that's your Global News Now. Here's a new look at the last month's 5.8 magnitude earthquake as it hit Washington, D.C. from the inside. Tourists are scrambling down the staircase as debris begins to fall. Officials with the National Park Service are still working to determine the extent of the damage. The initial cracks in the Washington Monument were filled, but officials believe there may be more. The monument has been closed since that earthquake. This 96-year-old Florida woman is accused of shooting and killing her own nephew. 
Amanda Rice Stevenson appeared before a judge on homicide charges earlier yesterday. Neighbors say she moved in with her nephew, 53-year-old John Rice, a few months ago, but there had been problems. And Rice may have recently asked her to move out. Police say they found a gun at the home. Well, it may seem a bit odd, but more burial plots are popping up online for sale. As more people opt for cremation and more or more cost-effective end-of-life solutions, plots are selling from $1,000 to up to $50,000 for a family. Here's the dirt on the recent trend. For sale, two burial plots in Forest Hills Memorial Park in Palm City. This is new to me, a kind of a weird investment. The woman selling them, 28-year-old Holly Perky. They belong to her grandparents who moved out of state, and she bought them seven years ago. Come on, let's show them the big one. No? Whoa. But now this stay-at-home mom wants this cemetery real estate off her hands, and she wants $3,000 in cash for the pair of plots in return. And the money would help, so it, that's the reason why it came to my mind, well, maybe I should get these on Craigslist and do something about it. And Holly isn't alone. She's one of hundreds of South Floridians turning to websites like Craigslist to trade in their pre-purchased burial plots for cash. So this is our lounge room. Julian Almeida owns Palms West Funeral Home and Crematory in Royal Palm Beach. When money gets tight in life, many people begin to cut costs when it comes to planning for death. The cemetery is the part of the funeral that really has gone up drastically. He sees more people trying to sell off their pre-purchased plots, veterans looking into government financed burials, and more of Almeida's customers are skipping the burial altogether, opting for cremation, about 68 percent of his business. And it's sort of doubled in the past 10 years. The funeral business is alive and well, though it's certainly transforming, thanks in large part to people like Holly. Because really they're no good to me as of right now. I don't need them and hopefully <laughs> Won't need them anytime soon. Trying to make a few extra dollars wherever they can be found. A cemetery worker in Wisconsin is in trouble with the law for stealing a guitar from a crypt. Police say Stephen Conard confessed to taking the Fender Telecaster because he has a respect for fine musical instruments. It's worth about $2,000. The guitar was laid to rest with its owner because that's what the man's daughter says was his last wish. Conard was released on bond, and the family is outraged. And to give a cash bond or a signature bond? Are you serious? Do you know what we have to go through as a family because of what he did to our father? Our number one priority now is working with the family of the deceased so that we can assist them in reaching the closure though that they so well deserve. The Catholic Diocese runs the cemetery and placed Kennard on unpaid administrative leave. If convicted, he faces up to 10 years in prison and $25,000 in fines. Well, traffic came to a stop in Portland, Oregon, but not because of an accident. This runaway dog was the one to blame. Take a look at the dog running in and out of traffic along the freeway with cars at a standstill. It happened during rush hour on Monday night. You can even see a driver running around trying to catch the dog unsuccessfully left the freeway after about 15 minutes. Uh, someone finally caught the dog near a high school and brought it back to its owner. Still to come, a long day of work followed by grocery shopping. Who wants to scan their own stuff? But a major chain is catching on and doing away with self-checkout. I'll tell you who it is. Plus, if you haven't, it may be the time to switch to debit while your checks may no longer be free. And wanted 78,000 workers. Who's hiring for the holidays? We'll tell you that gift coming up next on 